Hey, fourth graders, Mr. Laval here coming live from my closet classroom. I'm sure uh, you guys have talked a little bit about where I'm hunkering down. Here's a nice view of my office. The closet classroom. Um, today in the closet classroom, guys, I want to talk a little bit about using a timeline and what a timeline is, how we would use it. And I want you to understand that um, some text or some books that are written use kind of a timeline style or format to tell the story. Uh, a timeline is a tool where we can keep track of events that happen in a story in order, in sequential order, sometimes it's called, or chronological order, means the order that it happened, okay? So um, a timeline, I'm sure you guys have seen a timeline before, but I created a timeline here as an example that I would like to show you guys. I put together a timeline of the events of the 2019-20 school year, and it starts over here. Nope, starts over here, this hand, Mr. Laval, um, with the first thing that happened this year. And the first thing that happened way back in September was the first day of school where we got to meet teachers and classmates and all came together for the first time, right? And then as we moved forward and looked at the next event, the next event that happened in the school year was Halloween, okay? Kind of a bigger event. It was, if you guys remember, a snowy, cold trick-or-treating with friends and family. Um, felt more like December than it did Halloween, but that was the next uh, big event that happened in the school year. Then as we move forward, we took a little break around Thanksgiving, had our Thanksgiving break. Next in order of the school year was a Christmas break. Came back from Christmas break, had a chance to go on a field trip to the art museum. That was the next thing that happened again in order, and, and timelines tell events that happen in order. All right, skipping ahead, virtual learning started. Um, next event, once kind of along the si same time that virtual learning started, Mr. Laval stopped shaving. Give you an update on that. You can see there's a lot of gray in my beard, fourth graders. I didn't know I was getting that old. Thought I was still a young man, but apparently not. So that was an event um, that happened after virtual learning started. Again, these events go in order. The last event that I have on my timeline is students showed great independence, responsibility, and dominated virtual learning. So this is just an example, a quick example about how we could use a timeline and create a timeline for what happened during the school year, okay? Um, it focused on kind of bigger events that happened back in September, all the way to where we are now in, um, what are we in, April, April, April 14th. So here's a timeline of events. I created this in my notebook, very easy, um, pretty easy to create, easy to write down, um, manipulate. You don't need a worksheet or a piece of paper to create a timeline. Today, what you guys are gonna work on is you're gonna create a timeline for lost and found cat. So in your thoughtful log, just at the title, or at the top, I always like to put the title, Lost and Found Cat. It was by Doug Koontz. And I like to turn my notebook this way, the hot dog way, to give me a little bit more room. And again, simply, ladies and gentlemen, put a line in the middle, okay? Have dashes that mark the events. I like to alternate going below and then above just to give me some more room to write and to record some of my thinking. So you're going to create a timeline of events of the things that happened in the book. What happened at the beginning, what happened at the middle, and then what happens at the end. So a timeline is a great way for keeping track of big events in the story. And that's how the author, Doug Koontz, tells his story in a sequential order. So there's some things that happen at the beginning of the story, middle of the story, and end of the story. They all connect, but they're told in chronological or sequential order. So timelines are a great way to take notes and capture that and annotate our reading. That's gonna be your job today, is using a timeline to capture the main events of the story, tell them in order, and make sure that you understand um, all the big events that happen throughout the story. All right, fourth graders is where I'm gonna leave you. Good luck with your timelines today. I wish you the best, and uh, let me know if you need anything. Thank you.